Hi, I'm Cheryl Cage. I'm a senior security partner strategist at AWS. I am on the security and compliance partner team and our team runs the security and compliance acceleration program, which is also known as ATO and AWS. And I get to work on a very dynamic and fun team. FedRAMP stands for Federal Risk and Authorization Management Program. So FedRAMP wants to advance the adoption of cloud services. They want to create more transparency between cloud service providers and government agencies. FedRAMP uses a do once use many approach to standardize the assessment process for agencies that want to utilize cloud service products. There's a lot of stakeholders. So the federal agencies are going to be the ones that sponsor the cloud service provider or CSP through the authorization process. They are also the ones that review the package by the CSP and grant the overall ATO or authorization for that cloud service offering. The next we have cloud service providers. So cloud service providers are the ones that are creating those cloud service offerings or CSOs for the federal government to use. Next we have third party assessment organizations or 3PAOs. So the 3PAOs are the ones that actually perform the assessments on the cloud service offerings. Next, we have um, the FedRAMP Program Management Office, or PMO. The FedRAMP PMO resides within uh, GSA, and they're the one that supports the agencies and the cloud service offerings, or the CSPs, through the process. And they're also the ones that maintain the repository for the security packages for FedRAMP. Lastly, we have the Joint Authorization Board, or JAB. And the JAB is the primary governance and main decision maker for FedRAMP. And it's comprised of three different agencies. One, we have DHS, we have GSA, and then we also have the Department of Defense. For FedRAMP, there's two paths to authorization. So agency authorization path is the mo more common path. This is where an agency sponsors you through that process. So in order to even move forward with FedRAMP, you need an agency sponsor. You can still do a readiness assessment, but it's not a requirement for FedRAMP agency ATO. So once you formalize that partnership with your agency, you also uh, must go through the sponsorship with the agency. And all of that is outlined on the FedRAMP.gov site. They have a bunch of templates and resources that you can look at at what the path is for an agency sponsorship. And next we have the JAB or the Joint Authorization Board and they grant a PATO, which is provisional authorization. And the JAB PATO is the more difficult route because they only select up to 12 cloud service offerings per year. And with the JAB route, you have to go through a FedRAMP readiness assessment. And you also have to file a business case on the FedRAMP Connect site. And then what you want to show in there is that you have a broad demand for your product. For FedRAMP JAB path, CSPs should review the documentation up on the FedRAMP site for the JAB prioritization guidance documentation. And then once you complete your business case, you submit that to info at fedramp.gov. Once they review all these packages or business cases, they then select the CSPs at different times of the year. And those are usually announced on their FedRAMP blog. For FedRAMP, you have to secure that agency sponsor in order to have your path forward. So that's the first step. Or if you're going the JAB route, you need to file that business case and make sure that you have that demand of agencies that want to use your product. Next, it's recommended to engage with a consulting partner. FedRAMP's a very rigorous and tough compliance framework. Um, so it's always best to get knowledge from the experts. There's a lot of documentation. This, this includes the system security plan or SSP. And what you have to do in that SSP is document all of the controls that you are implementing in your environment. So for a FedRAMP moderate environment, that is 325 controls. For a FedRAMP high environment, that is 421 controls. Provide all of your diagrams and data flows as well. Um, and then it also includes several uh, different attachments that are mandatory for FedRAMP as well. Next, you want to make sure you implement the balance of the controls that are not inherited from AWS. And you have to document all of those in your uh, SSP and show how you are meeting the control requirements. Then if you are going the JAB route, you want to start down that FedRAP readiness assessment path. You're going to want to engage a third party assessment organization for your readiness assessment. If you're not doing a readiness assessment, your next step still is to engage a third party 
assessor to go through your assessment. So they're gonna come in and they're going to assess your whole environment. They're going to document that assessment and then they're going to submit the security assessment report or SAR to your agency or to the JAB and Federate PMO for review. For AWS, we have two different uh, regions that are authorized for FedRAMP. So we have our US East-West regions that are authorized at the FedRAMP moderate impact level. That is granted with a, a JAB PATO and also multiple agency uh, ATOs. You can have moderate workloads, low workloads or low impact SaaS workloads deployed on US East-West. Then we also have our GovCloud regions and GovCloud is authorized up to FedRAMP High. Also includes DOD Security Requirements Guide, impact levels four and five. A couple uh, great resources to start with. One is go to our AWS Services and Scope page, click on the FedRAMP tab, and this will outline what services are currently authorized for FedRAMP in the US East regions and also the GovCloud regions. So if you are deploying your workload in GovCloud, you want to make sure all the AWS services that you are using are authorized for FedRAMP. The next thing that uh, a great resource is if you utilize our AWS Artifact Service, um, you can log into the AWS console. There's FedRAMP customer package that's listed there. Within that, it has a customer responsibility matrix, and that outlines the responsibility for each of the uh, FedRAMP controls. Each control is outlined for the controls to state whether you can inherit that from AWS, whether it's a shared responsibility where AWS implements part of that control, and then the customer has to implement the other part of the control, or it will say that it's a customer responsibility to implement that control. And lastly, we have a great new resource. It's in beta. They're called the Customer Compliance Guides, or CCGs as we call them. So the customer compliance guides are available under NDA and you'll need to reach out to your account manager or partner development manager in order to get access to those. And what those do is they help customers understand their responsibility for a given service from a security compliance standpoint. So they add on to that customer responsibility matrix that we have and they dive deeper into the AWS service for each one of those controls. And it summarizes the best security practices specific to each service that the customer may want to implement in order to help meet those controls. We're also looking for feedback on these customer compliance guides as well. So we look forward to hearing from our customers. Uh, you can always go on the, to the FedRAMP blog or on the FedRAMP site to see what new updates are coming for FedRAMP. It's wonderful working with these, these great partners and uh, customers every day, and we're helping to secure more workloads on AWS and for federal agencies.